Hi, I'm Dr. Basil Kawash. I'm an allergist immunologist at Vanderbilt University Medical Center in Nashville, Tennessee. The subject of this talk is pet allergy. And I'm going to start off talking about dogs. So 50 to 70 percent of American households have a pet at home, either a dog or a cat, maybe both. We know that 20 to 30 percent of people are allergic to pets. Cats, dogs, again, people can be allergic to both. When it comes to dog allergy in particular, there are several different dog proteins that people can be allergic to. Those can be proteins from the skin, proteins from the hair, and proteins even from things like uh, that you're going to find in the saliva. Most commonly, people are going to experience allergy symptoms to dog from breathing in the, the particles that are suspended in the ambient air. But sometimes you can get allergy symptoms from contact, let's say petting the dog, or if the dog licks you or bites you, some people can break out in a little bit of an itchy rash in that area that's called contact urticaria. But again, most symptoms are going to be respiratory that are associated with other types of environmental allergies, itchy eyes, runny nose, stuffy nose, and if you have asthma, coughing or wheezing. We, when we're trying to treat dog allergies, we don't tell people to get rid of their dog. I have a dog myself. I'd be heartbroken if somebody told me you're allergic, you have to get rid of your dog. What we often advise people to do is to wash their dog periodically to wash off a lot of those allergens that they, uh, might be problematic for them. We also recommend using an air purifier like a HEPA filter. And we might also recommend things like keeping the dog out of the bedroom so you're not exposed to the dog during the six to eight hours of, uh, a day when you are asleep or in bed. There is a role for allergy medications, so over-the-counter medications antihistamines and nasal sprays. There's also a very well-established role for allergy immunotherapy or allergy shots if you can't avoid being around the dog, which a lot of dog owners and pet owners in general say that they can't because, let's face it, they're living inside their homes with these animals. Dog allergy uh, immunotherapy has shown a lot of success, and I have many patients who are dog owners who go on allergy immunotherapy and find that their quality of life has gotten a lot better and they're able to spend a lot more time playing and up close with their dog. I'm going to pivot now and talk about cat allergies. Cats are obviously a little bit different. The, we think that one of the main allergens in cats is actually the saliva um, allergen. And cats clean themselves by licking their fur. So if you're allergic to the cat saliva, that's going to be really problematic because they're shedding their hair and they are, you, you know, if you pet them, you're, you're coming into contact with some salivary proteins from the fact that they've licked themselves, regardless of whether or not you're actually touching their mouth or they're licking you. So cat allergen can also be quite sticky. And by that, I mean when the cat sheds or leaves behind allergen, it remains behind in the room for several weeks, possibly even months. So it's really, really hard to avoid cat allergen if you have a cat inside the home. Washing the cat is also impractical, unlike with a dog Cats probably aren't going to like it or tolerate it too much if you try and wash them and eliminate the allergen that way. We think that allergy shots and allergy medications, again, have a very uh, big role to play in the management of cat allergies. And a lot of patients, as with dogs, have seen their quality of life improve from going on cat allergy shots to desensitize them or make them less allergic to their own cat. And that's, I think, for me, when I see a patient who has a cat at home and has a known cat allergy based on positive allergy testing and their own symptoms, I strongly recommend using allergy shots in those individuals to restore some normalcy to their life. There are claims about hypoallergenic dogs and hypoallergenic cats. In truth, there's not exactly any such thing as a hypoallergenic dog or cat because we know that the level of skin epithelium shed from both kinds, uh, both types of breeds, is about the same. Having said that, there are certain dog breeds, for instance, that'll shed more hair than other dog breeds. And what some people might be experiencing is that they're, they may be breathing in more irritant particles from the dogs that shed more versus the dogs that shed a little bit less hair. That's one possible explanation for what people observe. Because I do get patients that say to me, I got the hypoallergenic dog and I feel a lot better. Maybe that's why. For more information about pet allergies, please visit the Academy 
of allergy, asthma, and immunology website at www.aaai.org. Thank you.